Thank you very much, Pia. Um, Chairman Moon and uh, my other colleagues here who will be introduced uh, properly later, ladies and gentlemen. ASEAN 2017 is 50 years old. When I first heard the word ASEAN, I was a teenager. And I thought somebody misspelled Asian. So when I saw the word, I said, no, that's an I, not an E. I did it, it was explained to me, and I got to learn, as I became older, that ASEAN is ASEAN, Asian is Asian. ASEAN was started by, no, there was, an, there was another grouping called Mafilindo, which was Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. So there were, they were beginnings on trying to get together. Until in 1967, finally, five countries formed ASEAN. Now, what I remember very clearly is in the 19, late 70s to the 1980s, we would attend ASEAN meetings all around ASEAN. And it always began with the Chambers of Commerce getting together, coming up with ideas that we in turn would agree on, and then we would pass on to the ministers and then to the heads of state. That was a format. And in trying to give meaning and implementation to the ideals of ASEAN, which is co-prosperity in economic matters, thereby promoting peace. You know, that was the initial idea. We were finding, trying to find out what is the mechanism, what is the model that we will use. And I was sitting in one round table with the ministers of industries of ASEAN, together with the private sector, and they were discussing the concept of ASEAN Industrial Complementation. AIC. And they were bargaining. The ministers were bargaining. They were talking, okay, they said, let's talk about a car industry. Or oh, you, Singapore, you take care of your transmission factory. Philippines, you take care of the electricals. The other country, you take care of the engine. They were trading, like, like you know, traders, negotiating what each of the five member countries would manufacture in their own country. And then thereby, import that final product on a free trade basis. The idea being, we will, they were talking about cars. No? So they said, we will import a car duty free if all of each one of our economies, five of us, contributed to the making of that car. Each has a factory, each has workers, each has its own investment. That was the idea that was being talked about. You move forward, for about 25 years, nothing was happening. It was sort of just sleeping. You know? uh, they talk about concepts such as the ASEAN Industrial Joint Venture, AIJV, uh, brand to brand complementation. You know? uh, these were the, the beautiful uh, terminologies at the time. Now, that said, it moved on, and in 19 just want to get my notes right. 25 years after 1967, in 1992, voila, AFTA was born. ASEAN Free Trade Agreement. Obviously, the idea of free trade was already there in 1967, but provided it is industrial complementation. No one is left behind. Well, that was what the idea. And after AFTA was born, this is where things became more complete for the private sector to understand. Now let me just go back very briefly, just to really show to you the divergence of ASEAN and how entrepreneurial power has been able to go above the differences. Very briefly, Brunei, language, Malaysia, colonial power, British, religion, Sunni, Mis Sunni Islam, Government, Unitary Islamic Absolute Monarchy. Cambodia, language, Khmer, colonial master, French, religion, Buddhism, form of government, unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy. Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia, language, 
colonial power, Dutch, religion, Islam, government, unitary presidential constitutional republic, uh, Laos, French, language, Lao, Buddhism, unitary Marxist Leninist one party semi presidential socialist republic, or oh, long description. Uh, next, Malaysia, Malay, colonial power, British, religion, Sunni Islam, government, federal, parliamentary, elective, constitutional monarchy. Next, Myanmar, uh, language, Burmese, religion, um, Ther Theravadu, Buddhism, colonial master, British, government, unitary, parliamentary, constitutional republic, Philippines, uh, Filipino language, uh, colonial masters, the Spanish, and the USA. Culture, uh, religion, Roman Catholic, Christianity. Form of government, unitary, presidential, centrist republic, sorry, constitutional republic. Singapore, British, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, more or less the same, but Buddhism is more. Uh, former master, British, government, unitary, dominant, Party, Parliamentary Republic. Thailand, language, Thai, religion, Buddhism, colonial master, zero. The only one in ASEAN, form of government, unitary, parliamentary, constitutional monarchy. Vietnam, French, Vietnamese, religion, irreligious. They don't really have a religion, majority of them, but they have Buddhism and Christianity as well. Partisan government, Marxist-Leninist, one party, socialist, parliamentary republic. Unemployment rate varies from less than 1% in Thailand and in, I think Laos to 7% in the Philippines. Per capita income from $1,200 to $52,000. Why disparity? So when you look at all this, the whole world was wondering, how can you create an ASEAN community out of such divergence, the answer came forward from entrepreneurs. I have visited all of the countries of ASEAN except Laos. And everywhere I go, there was a chamber of commerce and there were entrepreneurs who wanted to set up enterprises and employ people and get things done. That's why the beginnings of ASEAN came from the ASEAN Chambers of Commerce, who were the entrepreneurs, the businessmen. So we can, it can be said that ASEAN was born out of the entrepreneurial power of the ASEAN business people. So uh, John Dixon was saying, uh, you know, maybe we should call the title ASEAN Renaissance. And in a sense, he's correct. Because before the colonial powers came, to nine countries of ASEAN. Each country already had its own system of government, its own method of existing. That is why each of them developed their own language, even their own way of writing. So they already were, in their minds, a set established country. Then the colonial powers come in, and then they're trying to re redefine and bring back their past. Because we all know Renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. So I was thinking, is ASEAN really under rebirth? Well, the answer can be yes, because before the colonial powers came, they were already existing on their own, and then they were dominated. And then now they're trying to rebirth using their colonial, their, their past prior to the colonial uh, time, and even during the colonial period, to the future. So it's a renaissance, it's a rebirth. That's correct as well. Okay. That said, the ASEAN tried very, very hard to develop, as Dr. Moon says there, uh, new models for peace and development. Okay. As I said earlier, the first models were ASEAN Industrial Complementation, AIC. As an industrial joint venture, which was really to set up big factories, big industries that were financed by governments because the private sector could not afford to build a big factory. 
and then BBC, brand-to-brand -brand complementation, and then AFTA was born. So you see already four models you know, that were being looked into. When AFTA was born, then other ideas came out, such as AFAS, A-F-A-S, the ASEAN Framework Agreement on Services. This is very contentious. No? Can a lawyer in the Philippines practice law in Singapore? Can, can a worker in, 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 in uh, Thailand come to Manila? No? These are the issues there. That was done in uh, 1995. Then along with that, by 2003, 2004, the AIC, ASEAN Industrial Complementation, graduated to another name. We called it AICO, A-I-C-O, ASEAN Industrial Cooperation, no longer complementation. Now, very confusing. You know? What is the difference between complementation and cooperation? And then, to explain it further, they came up with CEPT, which is Common Effective Preferential Tariff. So the first time, this lowering of tariff came into force as another model. And then, as it went forward, it developed the concept of rules of origin, wherein if two ASEAN countries manufacture a product with 40% local content, the 40% can come from only one ASEAN country or two or more ASEAN countries, and the 60% of the content or the value, the FOB value of the product can come from the United States, can come from Africa, from any country, then it would be considered as an originating product from ASEAN and be subjected to zero to five percent tariff. Now, not many in the world know about this. I don't know why. Maybe it's a secret that those who were negotiating this kept it a secret so their friends would be the first to use it. No, but that is existing. So to our non-ASEAN friends, take opportunity. You don't have to close down your factory in your country. You just have to manufacture 60% there and do the 40% in ASEAN. So instead of 100% of X amount, you will have 60% of more vo uh, volume and then the 40% coming from ASEAN. Then you can penetrate the ASEAN market of 600 million duty-free. Okay, um, that said, we came out again in 2007 with another new model, now called the AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community, which we are into now. Okay? And this becomes more complicated. What does it stand for? It stands for the free flow of goods, services, investment, skilled labor, capital. Free flow of all those five items. And the aim is, by 2025, 10 years so, how many years from today, we will have a highly integrated and cohesive economy. Try to understand that, what it means. Competitive, innovative, and dynamic ASEAN. Enhance connectivity, which we will do anyway because of the internet, and sectoral cooperation. Sectoral cooperation, it means if you're engaged in the furniture industry, you, don't, you compete with your ASEAN neighbor, but you also cooperate. A resilient, inclusive, and people-oriented ASEAN. And then, a global ASEAN. So these are the dreams and aspirations of ASEAN, which was nurtured by the business sector, and of course, the, our politicians went forward with it. We were not content with ASEAN, so we ended up with ASEAN plus three. ASEAN China, ASEAN Japan, and ASEAN South Korea. And then we were not happy with that. We added two more countries as our dialogue partners. So now we have ASEAN India, and we have ASEAN Australia, New Zealand. Maybe next time we will have ASEAN the world. I don't know. Take over the WTO. <laughs> anyway, so that is, where, that is where we're going. Now, let's go to reality. So these are the, the principles that is in the minds of, of the ASEAN uh, people. But then when you go into reality and you start talking to people as they try to implement this, you will find out that there's a lot of fear. 
fear born out of the fear of being colonized again by this time a core ASEAN nation. They won't say this, but that is engendered. And concepts of who will own the major companies if we have free flow investment. Is it proper for Thailand's businesses to be owned by non-Thais, or should they own 51%? These are the gut issues coming out. Is it okay if the Indonesians just become workers to companies owned by before colonial masters today by our ASEAN neighbors? who have more money. So the model of the ASEAN Akama community is continuing to evolve. And hopefully with the continuance of the Global Peace Convention, we can come up with a new solution to temper the fears of the ASEAN people as they try to implement all these models, so many. If you look at the glossary of ASEAN, there are about 50 terms that you won't even understand what it's saying. One is ATIGA. What the hell is ATIGA? ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement. <laughs> I already mentioned AFAS, you know? ASEAN uh, Framework Agreement on Services. Um, there's, there's so many terms, you, you, you get crazy thinking about them. Now, what has become clear uh, globally is that we have critic protectionism, communism, socialism, capitalism, free trade, globalism, everything is under attack. What it really is showing is that oh, now there's populism, which is really just a clamor of people against whoever is in government. They're saying they're not doing your job, or we're not happy, you know? So th there seems to be a, a search for a new ism. We haven't described it yet, but there is a search for that. And I feel that the Global Peace Convention is a very good venue to come up with ideas on what this new ism is. What is it that will satisfy the fears of people, that will satisfy those that lose the competition game? And this is one problem with globalism. Globalism and free trade means free competition. I mean, you have competition, you have a winner, and you have a loser. What do you do with Greece? They lost the competition game. What they do with Germany, they won the competition game. No. There has been no solution for Ward. If you're a loser in free trade, the answer is borrow more money, cut your salaries, take away your pension, and let the guiding hand of the market save you in the future. So there has to be something there. No? I don't know what the answer is, but I'm hoping we can find new models for peace and development, innovative leadership that's moral, to solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yulo. I really do like the point that uh, Mr. Yulo made earlier.